hand down there to catch it. Oh. Here is your rocker, and here is our ah, lifter. See that play? That's no good. All right, so we're gonna take our new well lubricated lifter and just slide it right down in there, right like that. Then we're gonna take our rocker, just like that. What's up, Buck Dog with Dini in the Garage? Today we're going to talk about doing a valve cover job uh, on a 4.7 liter uh, Jeep Chrysler Dodge motor. Additionally, if you have the valve cover off, it makes a lot of sense to do your hydraulic lifters. When these things go bad on these engines, uh, catastrophic failure is a potential. Uh, what happens is, and I'm going to go into more detail on this later, these things collapse, the rocker is allowed to pop out of its spot, and then it's just banging around uh, under your valve cover there. It could break off a piece of your head, it could bend valves, it could mess up your cam. So if you're going to have your valve cover off, like I was, because I had a, a real bad uh, leak on both sides, it makes sense to look into these. Now, I recorded the whole video for you, the how-to, what you need to remove. Before we get to that content, though, I want to go over some of the stuff I learned on this project. All right. Now, uh, first of all, let me just show you what my valve cover gasket looked like. I don't know if you can, can you see it in there? It, it basically is hard plastic. Now, that's why it was leaking, and that's what started this whole thing. Every time I started my Jeep after it was warm, um, it would smell like oil, you know, and the, the back bottom corners on both valve covers um, were soaking wet and they were leaking right onto the exhaust there. This is why this 20 year old gasket gave up the ghost and um, uh, it was leaking. So that that's what initiated this. Now, if anybody has ever done any research at all on the 4.7 liter V8 that they put in the Chrysler's, Dodge's and Jeep's, what is a big issue they have? the valve lifters, well valve seats dropping, but we're not talking about that today. The valve lifters, the hydraulic lash adjusters collapse, the rocker arm pops out of place, now you got the cam in there spinning, there's a rocker arm loose, your valve's not opening so you got a missed cylinder, um, you break pieces of your head, you ruin your cam, it, it's a big problem. So, this is a real simple project, but if you're gonna have the valve cover off, you might as well go the extra mile and do this. Um, I got some Melling replacement ones, they were $3.50 50 cents each. Um, you need 16 of them for the 4.7. I believe it's the same on the 3.7, but you're only going to need 12 for that motor. Now, they sell a fancy tool for removing these, uh, but if any of you are familiar with Martin Built, you know there's a better way. I went for the better option, the cheaper option. Um, I took a 10 millimeter wrench, I got it nice and hot, and I bent it at just over a 90 degree angle, a little bit uh, more acute than 90 degrees. Uh, I also ground down the bottom of it just a little bit, and what this allows you to do is get up under the rocker, your lifter's right here, you get up under the rocker, you tilt like that, and the rocker pops right out. Get your hand down there to catch it, oh, and there you go, here is your rocker. You're gonna see that later in the video. First, I just wanted to get some real good context for you guys, because I, I don't feel like I had this context when I dove into this project, and I would have liked to. Now, um, when I was planning this project with Eric, <laughs> he was making fun of me a little bit. He's like, oh man, you're gonna do your, your lifters? You only got 120,000 miles, you're being paranoid. And I was like, I don't know, screw it, I'm just gonna do them. Well, about 12 of the 16 lifters, you see that? That's no good. That's real bad. All right, now what's happening on these lifters, see, is the spring inside is starting to fail. So essentially, there's no longer the correct amount of tension being put on the rocker. Now, a number of things can happen. First of all, if there's not enough tension being put up on the rocker, um, the valve's not getting opened all the way, so the motor's not running efficiently. This was one of the good ones. See, that's how they should look. I shouldn't be able to push it down with my finger, let alone move it freely. So, first of all, your engine's not running efficiently. Uh, my engine's gonna be running a lot more efficiently now that I have this changed. The bigger problem is, you've got your, val your lifter here, your valve here, and your rocker arm is sitting on both of them with the cam pushing down on it to push on your valve. Now, if this has some room on it, what happens is your cam lobe comes around and instead of pushing it down, it kind of catches it and it just pops it right out. And that's what people talk about. They say, oh, my lifter collapsed and the motor ate itself. Well, that's what they mean. This thing failed all the way. It was able to pop that rocker out. Now you've got a, a piece of metal almost this size um, just kind of banging around 
under your valve cover there. It's getting knocked by your cam, it's hitting into valves. I mean, it can do some real damage. I've seen it shatter heads, I've seen it uh, bend valves. So uh, this was an absolutely, I highly recommend, if you're gonna have your valve cover off, do these, absolutely. Now, when you're putting everything back together, don't just slap it in there, all right? You're gonna wanna take some care. You're reassembling a highly sensitive uh, system in your engine. You wanna use assembly oil, all right? Well, I didn't have any at the time. I did order it, it didn't come in time. Lucas, man. Lucas works perfectly. It's nice, thick, um, honey-like characteristics. You just want to dump it. I dumped it all over the cams um, and all over these lifters um, so that the first time it starts up, it's not dry and it's got a ton of lubrication. All right. A lot of times you hear about people replace these things and they say it ticks for the first minute that they put them in. Well, the problem is that you, you put these things in totally dry. You potentially just ruined those or, or uh, caused some damage to them. So when you put this system back together, you want to be uh, obviously be, being certain that you're not going to get any dirt in there while you're working, which is easier said than done, believe me. But additionally, you want to take care when you're putting it back together. Additionally, you want to soak your lifters, all of the new ones, in engine oil for, they say, about 12 hours. I don't know. I put them in like two days before I was going to do it. Soak these things. All right. I got all the new lifters sitting in uh, just engine oil. You know, that makes sure that there's oil inside all the little valleys, all the little components inside of here. Oil has a chance to get into them. So when you're putting them in your engine, you're not putting them in dry. Now, finally, for the first, I, I recommend you put these in and then you do an oil change before you even run the thing. All right. Do an oil change. If you can, put in um, a heavy-duty oil with zinc, something like Rotella. I've talked about Rotella and zinc a ton of times on the channel. I was trying to find Rotella. I couldn't find it in my area the correct weight uh, that I needed. I, could only, I found one three-and-a-half-quart uh, jug of the 530 I wanted. So I got regular, the same old Super Tech oil that I always use, and I found a, an oil treatment with zinc. If it, don't just get any oil treatment, you want the zinc. The zinc is gonna uh, cut down on the wear between the metal on metal parts. Um, since the 4.7 is not a motor that requires zinc in its oil anyway, just do it for the first oil change. Really, I'm just trying to make sure these things break in properly. I don't want to start the engine the first time, hear a bunch of marbles rolling around up there and find out that a rocker popped out and I ate my uh, valve train or something. So these are some things you can do to ensure that your work, and believe me, it is work, this is not a fun job, uh, is not all for waste. Now, here's some things that are gonna make your life easier. Make sure you have a ton of extensions and a ton of swivels. I recommend this right here. What this is, and I know you can't tell because there's Gorilla Tape on it, but it's a socket swivel. So instead of having a swivel and then putting a socket on it, this is a 10 millimeter, which is what all your valve cover bolts are, uh, swivel. Eric got this for me to make the job easier, absolutely saved my life. I think he said it was 12 bucks, worth every single penny. The reason it's wrapped in Gorilla Tape is uh, on the passenger side, in my experience, when I was doing this, passenger side, the very back bolt on the top, the only way to get to it, I got about four extensions and swivels, and then I needed this to, to be just barely off center like that, so I needed it to stay like that while I'm putting it back there. So the grill tape helped. You see people use electrical tape, duct tape. Um, make sure you have all that. Don't go into this with one wrench and, and one extension and, and one socket. Uh, you're gonna need a bunch of different stuff to get at all the valve cover bolts. Um, additionally, if you're going this route where you're not compressing the spring, you're gonna need something like a pry bar or a screwdriver to get your rockers back into place. Again, this is all stuff I'll show you later on in the video. I just wanted to give you as much context beforehand so that while you're watching the footage, you can associate it with everything I said here. And the reason that's important is you won't get as much out of the footage if you don't know these things to begin with. Uh, the final thing I'll say before we get into the footage is I did this by trying to take as little as possible out of the way. All right? I didn't want to remove my um, AC pump. I didn't want to remove the harness to my TCU. Uh, at the end, I ended up doing it. So you're better off just doing it to begin with. Remove as much as you can, especially on the passenger side. That side is awful. It's awful. If I could go back and do it, I didn't end up removing my uh, heater core lines. I think I would. Um, I wanted to once I already had the valve cover off, but then I was afraid of getting coolant dumped all down in the open head there. So uh, just take off as much as you can before and it's going to make your life easier. All right, let's get into it. 
So I got some Melling lifters off of rockauto.com. Melling's a real good name. Uh, they were about $3.50 a piece. You need 16 of them. And what you're gonna wanna do before you do anything else is soak these things, all right? I got all the new lifters sitting in uh, just engine oil. Uh, they've been soaking in there for over a day, soak them for a few hours. Uh, you want them to be nice and coated um, and fused with oil when you put them in so that you don't uh, immediately trash one of them for lack of oil. In addition to that, I did go ahead and get a Felpro gasket. Just pay for the Felpro. It's not that much more expensive than whatever the no-name brand is, and I've never had a problem with the Felpro. All right, now a bunch of stuff is gonna have to come off so that I can get to these valve covers. The battery has to come out, the battery tray has to come out, the air box system has to come out, a lot of other little things. Uh, I'm not going to take you through each individual one. I think we'll do this montage style and I'll put them up on the screen. All right, you can see a little bit about of where the uh, valve covers, this one's been leaking a little bit right here and even right there dripping right onto the exhaust. So when I restart the Jeep, you can see right there, that's exhaust manifold right there and that's oil leak. So that's why it's been smelling like a 300,000 mile Subaru when I started up. Alrighty friends, as a quick recap, we removed uh, the entire air system here. We disconnected the AC pump, but not the lines. We just, we're just folding it out of the way. Um, I disconnected most of the harness on this side. I marked a few things since there's going to be so many connectors going back together at the end. These are all of the uh, sensors that are going to come up here by the temp sensor. Um, and then here are all the throttle body sensors. It's not a bad idea if you're gonna disconnect that whole harness. As you can see, this side, kind of easy. Um, I think I can get this out relatively effortlessly. Now I'll probably remove the actual air box as well. Whoever designed this side, um, they are a terrible, awful person and I hate them. Uh, there's so much over on top of the, the valve cover. It's just, it's just gonna be a pain to get to. That's all there is to it. Right now we obviously have the battery and the battery tray out. Uh, removing the AC pump was for the benefit of this side. Now on these injectors, this little red piece has to slide up and then you depress it here and it pops off. Unfortunately, on most of mine, that red piece is deteriorated and gone. So what you have to do is get a pick or something and get along the side of it and just sort of lift it up like that, and then it'll slide off. All right, friends, we're at the point where we can tear this one off. Uh, we gotta do two things. First, we have to say hi to Eric. Eric joined us. Hello. Eric's gonna cameraman Dan this thing going forward and uh, make sure that I don't get furious and roll this thing down a hill when I get to that side. He and will. <laughs> we're gonna take some compressed air and we're gonna blow all this crud off both sides before we start getting into the last thing you want is 20 years of dirt, dust, and mouse droppings uh, getting in there on your pretty little camps. These valve covers are aluminum, so of course you want to go nice and easy on them. Just try to work it up a little. Usually you got 20 years of a seal. That's a good seal. Yep. <laughs> but not good enough to keep oil out, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. oh, there we go. There we go. Now let's see, can we sneak this guy out? That's a satisfying plunk. All right. All right. That's one. All right, so here is the valve cover. 
Uh, here is the seal and here's where it was leaking. You can kind of see it's bulged and deformed. That's what it was leaking right down onto my manifold. Every single time I started up when it was warm, it smelled like a 300,000 mile Subaru. Uh, inside, hey. nothing against Subarus, but we all know, man, <laughs> they put the motor in sideways, she's gonna leak. All right, so this first uh, rocker cam lobe is gonna be perfect to demonstrate how we're gonna remove this rocker and with it the lifter. You want your cam lobe to be up so it's not putting uh, very much pressure on your rocker right here. Then you're gonna get a 10 millimeter, preferably a nice thin one, put a little bend in it. All right, got this method from uh, Martin Built. Um, real good method. The alternative, you, you can do it with you know a, a $5 wrench like this one, or you can go and buy a $50 tool that does the exact same thing. You're gonna get it up under the uh, lifter there and get your hand down there to catch it. Oh, whoop, send the light flying. And there you go, here is your rocker. Out real nice, and here is our ah, lifter. Let's take these over the bench. All right, here's your rocker, and here is your hydraulic lifter, or more correctly, your lash adjuster. Its job is to keep pressure on the rocker. Your valve uh, stem would be over here. To keep pressure on the rocker so that when the cam comes around, the lobe hits it, it pushes down on the valve and opens it. This is uh, meant to adjust and always keep the proper pressure. What happens over time, they either get gunked up from poor oil changes or the spring inside just breaks down, they collapse. They don't put the proper pressure on your rocker. The valve, uh, excuse me, the cam comes around, it swipes this thing out, and now not only is your valve not opening, but you have a rocker rolling around in your head, uh, valve cover doing all kinds of damage. All right, so we're gonna take our new well lubricated lifter and just slide it right down in there, um, right like that. Then we're gonna take our rocker and position it over the, so that it's over the valve and not quite over the lifter yet. Now, depending which position you're in, you may use a breaker bar, excuse me, you may use a uh, like a pry bar or you may just be able to use a large flat bladed screwdriver, but we're really just gonna pop this guy in. There just like that. So in this case, a uh, pry bar was the right answer. Uh, sometimes a flat bladed screwdriver may do it. It's all gonna depend on the position you are in. Uh, I'll show you real quick how you can rotate your um, crank uh, camshaft safely. Uh, you'd never wanna do it by the uh, cam sprocket bolt there. We're gonna do it by the crank bolt uh, over in the front of the motor. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is get a 21 millimeter on a breaker bar right here in the middle of your harmonic balancer is your crank bolt. You can spin that and safely turn your uh, valve train to rotate your cam lobes into the proper position for uh, pulling all these things out. All right, friends, all of our new lash adjusters are in. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, it gets a little hairy back there, but it is doable. I recommend you grab a buddy. I broke my buddy. <laughs> I got we were, uh, he was turning the crank and it slipped and uh, some relatively significant damage. We're not sure what Light bit. blood, some yeah. places. We're not sure what of Ruby bit him, but something of Ruby down there bit him. Uh, what we're gonna do is use some, I, I ordered assembly lube, but it didn't get here in time. So we're gonna use some Lucas on all of this since it's now basically dry and we've been touching it. Uh, we did take special care obviously to make sure we didn't get any dirt in there as evidenced by the towels all over. Uh, we're gonna wipe these all down with some good Lucas um, in lieu of assembly oil. Then we're gonna advance the uh, crank so that this goes one full rotation to make sure these are all seated properly. All right, we got the Lucas on there. We're just gonna spin it around one full thing, make sure everything's nice and lubed. Of course, we're fighting against compression so it gets kind of difficult. Why I cut my finger open? Yep. <laughs> but after this, hopefully we can be nice and confident that, oh, let's try to fight through the compression. There we go. Uh, we can be nice and confident that the, um, <laughs> That's how Eric went down. That the cam is nice and lubricated, the lifters are nice and lubricated. It could be noted that taking these spark plugs out would make this a heck of a lot easier, but I didn't want to risk stuff falling down into the cylinder. All right, so we got the new valve cover oiled up. There are two little dots on the uh, new uh, gasket that are going to line up on your valve cover. It's going to make it real easy to figure out where it goes. Push it into place. We've got our new grommets on here. I wanted to show you how I got these little grommets out. So what I first did is I got a little set of pliers and pulled the tip out and like kind of ripped the whole tip piece off and then just got a little pair of snips and then cut it in two pieces. It was the easiest way for me instead of just trying to struggle to get them off in one piece because that was just more a pain. Two minutes, you rip the whole head off 
and you can pull them right out. Eric just explained how they work. They just fit in real loose and then they torque down when you snug them up. Like I said, everything's oiled on here so that it's uh, gonna be a nice snug fit. Let's get her in the Jeep. I'm done for tonight. All right, friends, just for some context, I took one of these lifters apart so you guys could see what it would look like inside. You got your casing here and then uh, there's this spring in the bottom that sort of keeps initial tension on the whole system. Uh, this cylinder goes over that spring and then seals against uh, this top piece and this is of course what sticks out the top there are oil galleys running all through here The oil in there is what gives you that hydraulic cushioning effect So when these things fail to seal against the side of this case real well or that spring starts going bad um, Those are all things that are going to lead to your failure um, That can be from age. It can be from poor oil change maintenance it can be from sludge built up in there um, So if you got your valve cover off man, it's really absolutely worth it to just replace these things It cost me like a hundred bucks to buy the 16 I needed yes, it takes some time but it's good peace of mind and I uh, revitalized that engine a little bit the efficiency is going to go way up now that the valves are opening all the way so that's all there is to it hope you enjoyed the video if you did by all means hit that like button leave us a comment down there in the squawk boxes if you have any questions I'll do my best to uh, get back to you let me know what you think of the video as always thanks for watching see you next time